Welcome back, sewists. We're approaching summer, and for me, summertime means easy, breezy, comfy little dresses, and that's what we're sewing today. For today's project, I've gone back to itch to stitch, and I've um, chosen this Oceanside dress. You can see how cute it is. It's pretty short. Um, it looks almost like a little skating dress or a tennis dress. It looks very um, almost athletic, but light and flirty. I think it's very cute, but this is a project for mom. So most of the elements of this dress are perfect. I like the waistband. It's made for knits, the nice soft full skirt, but we've done some alterations and I will show you those in a minute. Let me show you the fabrics real quick. And you can see it's mint and it gives directions for doing contrast for the sleeve. If you want to do this little inset, it shows how to, how to take it out or add it in if you want it. And we are doing for the sleeve, this lovely knit eyelet. Look at this. It's so stretchy and soft and drapey and it's going to look so cute with the blue, Swiss dot. I made this fabric before in lavender. I made a really fun top. I will put a link up to it if you would like to see the top made out of the same fabric. It has nice little dobby dots on it. It's nice and stretchy and soft and it's the color blue. My mom has the same complexion I do. It looks great on her and it makes her eyes look so pretty. So these are our fabrics. Some of the alterations that I made specific for my mom are that she does not like the short sleeve. It has a really cute little cap sleeve with a band, but that's really not her style. She likes to have her sleeve come closer to her elbow or or even a three quarter. So I have drafted the pattern longer. I will show you that. And then for the skirt, the skirt is super short. So we have lengthened the skirt to be just below the knee in the front. And then in the back, I've lengthened it even more because she has a forward posture. She uses a walker and she has bad back, which I totally can relate to. And that tends to make her, um, as the day goes, she leans forward more and more because her back aches. And that's hard on a skirt hem though. If you have a nice straight posture, your skirt hem's gonna be nice and straight. As your day goes, your skirt will dip forward. The front will be long and the back will be short, which we don't want. So I always just lengthen the back more and then that takes care of that. It would rather it look like a high-low skirt when she's standing nice and straight. And then when she starts to stoop, it looks like a straight skirt. <laughs> the hemline looks straight and it's an easy fix for that posture issue. It's also a good thing to do if you're sewing for somebody who sits in a wheelchair a lot because they need, they're sitting, you need more length. You think it wouldn't matter because they're sitting on it, but actually when you sit and the skirt pulls up, it's very uncomfortable. You would rather have a little bit more length in the back as a rule if you sit a lot um, in a wheelchair. Even if you are able to get up and get out of it, you're gonna be, um, they're probably gonna be a little happier with a little more length in the back. Just something to think about. So let me show you um, my pattern alterations real quick. I'm gonna show you on their directions first. This is what the little sleeve looks like. It's upside down. Here's the neck and here's the hemline and it actually has a little band that goes on it. So this, this is the sleeve and this is my sleeve. I'm sorry, it's white. White on white does not help, but I have lengthened it. It ended like way up here. So you can see I've lengthened all the way to the elbow and added a hemline. So we now have a soft full sleeve. For myself, I probably will put elastic in it. For my mom, I won't. We'll just have a nice soft sleeve. So that's the sleeve alteration. For the skirt, it's the same skirt front and back. And if you notice on the picture, it's pretty short. It kind of looks like a skating dress or something or a tennis dress to me. It's so cute but not necessarily what my mom would like to wear daily. So what I have done is I've lengthened it. This is one where you just lengthen from the hemline. And then in the back, I've lengthened it even more in the center back and then eased it back up so that, so I've stacked my front and my back on top of each other. Here's my front, here's where it ends. And this is how much I've lengthened in the back. And then can you see they swoop back up and meet at the side seam. 
This only has three eighths of an inch seam allowance, so it's really meant to be serged together. But you do not have to have a serger to sew this together. If you have a zigzag sewing machine, it will work great. You're gonna set it for a tiny little zigzag. I'll show you over the sewing machine, not a satin stitch, and that will help you keep from getting pop stitches from the outside. It's gonna look straight stitched together, but it will um, pull on and off nice and easy and will lay great. Um, we're gonna start with the white eyelid because it's easy. It's just the sleeve only, and then we'll move on to the skirt. Make sure if you lengthen the skirt like I did that you um, allow for that when purchasing fabric because it's a circle skirt. It's quite wide and you can actually lengthen it enough where it won't fit on a piece of fabric folded in half. So you need to consider that. The other thing I did is I added a pocket because what's the point without a pocket? All right, let's get cutting. Sleeves were a breeze. We're gonna start on the skirt and I mentioned how if you lengthen it too much, it won't fit on your fabric. So here's my 60 inch wide fabric lined up on the fold. And you can see it doesn't fit. But because this is a circle skirt, the easy fix is we're going to make sure it lines up at the um, waist up here. We're not changing the waist at all. So I'm gonna put this up here at the waist. You can even put a little pin to hinge it if you need to. Make sure you have it so that it's on at the length. And then we're just making sure it's on the fabric. And then this is how much I've slid it over. Now, it looks wonky, but what we're doing is we are not changing at all the grain line on the center back. We've just moved our center back. So we're losing this much fullness at the hem. We're not losing anything at the waist because then our fabric, I mean, our pattern won't fit and it fits on our fabric. Now, this will work for certain sizes. If you are super full in the hip, because this is a size 12. If you are super full in the hip, you may want to consider um, changing the way you cut this out or actually piecing in, adding godets, other things to give you the fullness that you want. Um, you could even cut this into fourths where you have a seam here so that you can cut them wider, cut them on single layers. So that's something to think about depending on how full you want your skirt, but that's how it's going to be for me. For the front and the back, we're gonna to have to swing it to get it on. All right, we've got our front bodice, our back bodice, and our neck band. This neck band can be cut out of your contrast if you want to. I'm not because my contrast is a little bit holy, and I just think that it's going to look more cohesive out of the blue. So those are these pieces all in the fold. You can see how I've refolded it. What's left is the waistband. We have to have four of these. This one is one that they've gave, given us not on the fold, though you certainly could place it on the fold. So I'm gonna cut out four of these. I'm gonna just refold a little bit to get four of those cut out, and then we're ready to go sew. All right, we're all cut out. Um, looking at the directions, when you first start, the very first thing they do in direction in their directions is have you put in the little V inset in the front of the, of the top, which we're not doing. So we're skipping that page completely and going to the next set, which is adding our sleeve. So because this is raglan, Everybody knows if you sew with me more than like three videos, I love me a raglan and I just do. And they, I'm broad shouldered. There's something about it. It hangs pretty, it looks pretty, it's easy to sew. Lots of things about it. So this is another raglan. It's also easy like for my mama to get on and off. Um, because it's raglan, I always put a safety pin in the front of the shirt because they look very similar front to back. And even though they are different, do not mix them up because it will not fit right. The front neckline is lower than the back neckline. There is more um, shoulder area in the back than in the front, but I still make a little mark. It just helps me keep track. And then we're going to pin our front sleeve seam to our shirt. So I've got both um, sleeves pinned to the front and I'm just going to search that on and then I'm going to pin the back on to those seams and then we'll have sort of like a circle. So it just takes a few minutes to put this little section together. Actually I think this is going to be a pretty fast little pattern. They do have markings on there. The back has a two notches, the front has one notches and their markings are literally just a little tiny slash line so you have to kind of look for it. I am going to be sewing this in blue um, thread 
throughout I only have a tiny bit that's white and I will probably switch just white top stitching to handle any of the white areas and it does not fray so if I don't want to I don't have to even serge the white areas again you can sew all of this on your sewing machine with a small zigzag um, let me show you what that looks like these are the settings just so you can get one potential um, way of doing it and then I'm just going to go ahead and sew a little bit it's back stitch all right so this is how the seam looks on the inside it's stretchy it will stretch now I've got it going so that the stretch is this way which is how most of this garment is sewn from the outside look it just looks like a straight stitch but the stitches will not pop as easily because you have the give within the seam. So you could definitely put your whole garment together with this. Knits do not tend to fray. They're pretty stable, um, unless you have a really loosely woven one. But most of your t-shirt knits and things like that, you don't even have to worry about a seam finish if you don't want to. All right, I'm gonna hold this up so you can see. This is the back, and you can see our little sleeves. Here's our seams. This is the inside of the shirt. Here's the front, so you can see how close the front and the back look. Holding it this way, I hope you can see, here's the back neck and here's the front neck. So you can see the back neck is higher than the front. That's how our bodies are built. We need um, the front neckline usually to dip down and the back to come up, and that's just the shape of our bodies. It's a fitting thing. So now that we've done that, the next step is neckband. It's one strip and we're going to sew it together on the short ends. So I'm gonna flip this right sides together. Everything we're doing is right sides together, 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to go ahead and serge this to make a circle. And then I'll take you over the ironing board. We're going to do a little quick ironing to fold this in half to apply it. But since I'm sitting at my serger sewing bands, I'm going to go ahead and get my waistband pieces. And I'm going to sew two waistbands. I have my ceiling fan on this, blowing things away. There we go. I'm going to take two waistbands. And we're going to sew these together on the short ends, like this. And we're going to do the same thing to this one. So we're going to have two waistband circles and a neck circle. I'm going to go ahead and serge all that together. It just is a little bit faster sewing. Personally, um, as prep work, if you don't want to do that, this is going to come up again in a few minutes when we're ready to go from bodice to skirt. So I'm going to serge these together, and then I'll take you over to the ironing board and show you how to press our neck band. By the way, the directions are excellent. It's itch to stitch always has very good directions in my opinion. I think they do a very good job of illustrating everything and explaining it. Now the waistbands are shaped, so you want to make sure you don't get it flip you get the correct pair to each other or you're going to have a funky fitting waistband. So we're here, we just put together our neck band. It looks like this. And then it shows clipping it halfway. And there's a reason for that. It makes it less bulky on the seam and makes it much more smooth. So here is mine. I put a little pin at the halfway mark. And if you look real close, you can kind of see a little zigzag. Now you don't have to do this, but I know this is going to get a lot of pull and wear and tear um, for on and off because of my mom. Like my mom's the one that's going to be pulling this on and off and I know that that um, mobility is an issue and it might get a little extra stress. So I want to make sure she doesn't end up getting a little hole here where the threads come undone. So I have gone in and actually zigzagged right on that just a little bit and backstitched to make it even more secure. And now we're going to clip up to but not through. All right, so this is how that looks. Can you see that? And what that allows us to do is to then, when pressing this, push the seam allowances in two different directions. We're ready to press. So here it is with the seam allowance pressed in two different directions. Now we can fold this in half. And now you can see that when that's folded in half, see how the seam allowance is offset and it makes it less bulky. It also makes it less bulky up here. And we're gonna fold this in half all the way around 
and carefully press the fold to get this ready to apply. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and press all of these seams too. Even if you never press again, pressing when you sew will make a much prettier um, finished garment and it goes together a little easier. All right, your little collar piece should look like this once it's pressed. Now I've gone ahead and put pins in at the quarters. So I have where my seam is, is going to be my center back. Directly across from that, you just fold it in half. I put a pin at the center front. And then you lay the center front and center back pin on top of each other. And wherever that fold is, is your quarters. We're doing the same thing for our neckline. So here's my neckline. And I have pinned center front and center back, and then I've pinned the quarters. Now, if you look at our quarters, if I hold this up, so you can see center front and center back are on top of each other, and here are my quarters. The shoulder seam is not, the top of the shoulder is not the quarter. It's offset, and that's because there's more room across the back of the shoulder than the front of the shoulder. The other thing you can do, and I'm pretty sure that on their pattern, they actually have markings for the neckline of the shirt and shoulder of the sleeve and for the little neckline band. You can transfer all those markings and use those. For me, quartering is faster and easier than transferring the markings, but do what you're comfortable with. Once you've done that, we're ready to pin it on to sew. We're gonna take our center back to our center back. This is why we have the pin in it, because it makes it easy to tell. Now, once I get this on, I'm going to go ahead and add my tag to this too, just because it makes it easy when putting it on to quickly tell front from back when dressing. Some things you don't need that. Some things there's buttons in the front or a zipper in the front and you're like, oh, well, I don't need a tag for that thing. But for this, um, the folded edge is down here and this is the cut edge where they are on top of each other. Once we get the quarters on, then we can put a few more pins in between if you need to, especially, and there should be some stretch. You should be stretching the neckline a little bit. And I usually will put a pin where the seam is to make sure the seam doesn't flip when I'm stitching it on. Once this is all pinned together, then we are ready to just serge or zigzag it around the circle and the neckline will be done. After that, we're doing side seam. I'm gonna go ahead and pin my side seam in and I'm just gonna stitch them both while I'm sitting at the overlock. This thing where we're putting like a ribbing or a neckband like this on, the neckbands are big and I always complain. You've heard me say it before that I had to cut down the neckband, that it was too big and it didn't make the neck fold against, the neckband fold against the body. It kind of made it stand up. This is not the case on this one. The neckband is tight. It is small and you will have ease in there. So you're going to be pulling this slightly as you're sewing it. So here's the ease. You're gonna be pulling this slightly as you sew it and taking in all that extra ease. It should be moving that ease from the shirt onto the neckband, make marrying them to each other. So I'm gonna just, can you kind of see? Here's my fullness. We're gonna just pull it out. Put as many pins as you need to to make yourself comfortable with it. So we're gonna sew that. And once the neck band is on, we're gonna to come to our side seams and we're gonna sew our side seams together. That's step 17 if you're following the directions. Front to back along the side seam and the sleeve. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a few pins in that and we're just gonna zoop sew that together too. So then our sleeve, will, our sleeve, underarm, side seam, and neckband will all get sewn on and then we'll be ready to start working on skirt. Just like that, we have a top. So here's our pretty little neckline. And it's pretty close, like it's not a deep neckline. I'll have to see, my mom may want me to widen op open up this neckline a little bit for her. We'll see how she feels about that going over her head and how hard it is for her um, to get dressed in it. We'll, we'll find out. Here is our side seam. I'm showing you the right side. I have added a tag to the back, so I took off my little safety pin in the front that was marking my front for me. Normally, I would now go ahead and hem this, and in the directions, if you're doing the, tr the other sleeve that's the little cap sleeve with the band, you would add your band now and your bodice is done. The only reason I'm not gonna go ahead and hem this is because I do want to serge this edge in white before I hem it and I'm gonna complete the entire garment and then change my thread to white for just the sleeve. So we're gonna move on to skirt. Now, the first thing they have you do 
in the next section after getting this part done is your side seams on your skirt which is easy front to back sew it and if you did not do any alterations um, then you will just have two of the exact same thing it doesn't matter front and back are the same on mine they're different because I kind of did a high low which I discussed earlier for um, posture etc reasons after you get your side seams then you're going to go ahead and do your two band pieces so I'm going to go ahead before we work on the skirt part because I'm putting a pocket in um, we're going to go ahead and do our band to our bodice so the band is shaped the narrower end and it's not real noticeable but the narrower end is on the shirt and the wider end is on the skirt so we're going to take our narrow end right sides together one of the bands line it up on our side seams pin it on and then once we've done that on the other side we're going to do right side to wrong side and pin that on let me make sure i get this going the right way and because we'll have three different seam allowances for one of the bands turn your seam allowance the opposite direction. I will do a little close up for you so you can see what I mean. We will just pin this all the way around and sew it. You'll have the right side of the band to the wrong side of the shirt and on on the inside and on the right side of the shirt you'll have right side band to right side shirt. It makes a little sandwich and what it does is it makes everything self enclosed. So when you stitch this around all things, so here's my inside the inside will have this pretty side against your skin and the outside will have the pretty side showing because you have two bands. So we're just going to match up side seams, pin this and sew this. Okay, here is my side seam. The bodice is in the middle and I have a band on each side. So when you're looking at it, you should see wrong side on whether you're on the inside or the outside because once it's sewn, it'll flip out and you'll see the right side. And can you see Everything's lined up right on the seam line, and one of my, my seam allowances goes to the right, and the other goes to the left, and I have them alternating back and forth, and that makes this flatter here. Other than, uh, otherwise, you would end up with six layers, or actually more than six layers, lined up on top of each other, going one direction, which could get really bulky. So this just makes it a little flatter, a little neater. So the waistband is pinned on to the bodice. This is how it looks. This is the inside. This is the outside, and if you look where it's sandwiched, can you see the excess? So when I stretch this, as I'm sewing, that excess will get eased in. It'll give just a little gathered effect, but it won't have any actual pleats or foldovers in the gathers. It'll just be the difference between easing the, um, the fullness of the bodice to the band. So here the band is on. You can see how it has a light sort of gathering, but there's not any foldovers or anything. It's just stretched to fit. I just pinned it on the other end to hold all my ends together. You could baste it if you want to. I don't want to because that's knit and I'm going to be stretching it again. I don't want to take it out. So I've gone ahead though and quartered this. So here's my center front, my center back, my side seam. So it's ready for the skirt when I'm ready. So there's our little top, super cute. So we are to this point in the directions. And now we're gonna work on the actual skirt because we're really at the home stretch. After that, we're applying skirt and we're hemming and we're done. So for the skirt, I'm adding pockets. So if you chose to add pockets and I, you can take a pocket from another pattern, it's pretty easy to draw um, a pocket pattern. Just uh, make sure that it's wide enough for your hand to go in and then longer. You don't want it to be even because stuff falls out give yourself some seam allowance. I gave myself extra. I gave, instead of just three eighths, I made it kind of deep, which doesn't matter. Now we're surging this. You cannot just surge the pocket all the way down because we have to come back and sew in and you'll kind of get a weird hooky do here um, where the pocket joins. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sew it to the pin on all four sides. So we're going to do four of these. It's going to have four ears of pocket stuck from waist Here's my waistband down. So I'm coming up about half an inch. I'm giving myself a little extra because I want to surge all of these together in the end. So I'm actually going to surge up to this point and stop on all four corners. And then we're going to come back and sew around the pocket 
and the lower part of the skirt. So let's get this part done. If you are sewing at your sewing machine, go ahead and just do your zigzag up to this point. Make sure you backstitch. The backstitch comment was specifically for if you're using the sewing machine. If you're using the serger, there is no backstitch, so don't worry about it. To do a partial search seam, I go in and I actually lift up my foot and I sink my needles where I want the seam to start. So here's my pocket. So I'm going to start this on every one at the bottom of the pocket where I want, I want my seam to end. That's where I'm going to start it and I'm just going to serge off. And I'm going to do that for all four sides. On some of them, the pocket will be on the top. On some of them, the pocket will be on the bottom. And you just want to pin so that the pin comes, like the head is over here. So you're going to pin this way out so you can line up that pin with your needles. And it makes it easier to start and stop. If you're doing it at the serger at the sewing machine, it'll be a breeze. And this is how it looks when I pull it out. So you can see this is the serging. Now I have room to come back and serge around the pocket and put my two pocket pieces together. And then I can also come back and serge up the side seam. I will come in with my sewing machine and probably do a tiny bit of straight stitching in here. I'll show you all that at the end, just to make sure that there's no little lumps at the bottom of our pocket. So we're gonna do this for all four sides. All right, let's sew those pockets together. We are going to lay our front skirt on our back skirt, and we're going to line up the pockets. The pockets are gonna be sticking out so you can see this is the wrong side. Here's our right side. We're gonna pin those pockets together, and we are going to stitch pocket only, and that's why we left ourselves some seam allowance here. We're gonna start here, and we're gonna serge or zigzag or straight stitch, whatever you choose around this pocket. And we're gonna do that for both sides. Once that's done, we're going to come back to the side seam and we will serge the side seam. Start, I would personally start at the bottom, serge up towards this and get as close as we can to our old stitching line. Try not to fold anything over or catch anything, so we're gonna do our best just to serge up as close as we can. If there's a little section that we are unable to sew, we will come back with our sewing machine and we will just stitch that little tiny area to make it nice and smooth. Here is my side seam, here's the pocket, and here's where the pocket is attached to the skirt. I'm going to start on the side seam and I'm going to, I'm going to use a zigzag and I'm going to make sure and backstitch. I want to hit some of these stitches because it's just going to keep this from unraveling. It's going to kind of act like a backstitch. And I'm going to zigzag, my teeny tiny zigzag, where this little hole is, all the way up next to these stitches here. And that's going to give a nice smooth pocket. So this is how it looks on the inside. And you can see I've stitched, and here's my teeny tiny little zigzag. And I've come right up next to this old stitching line here, which is where the pocket is. This is going to make it nice and smooth at the pocket and also help keep the pocket from uh, showing. We are in the home stretch now. We have a bodice completed and we have a skirt completed. I'm gonna hold this up. Be careful with these. There's a lot of um, stretch and give in this waistline. It's bias and it would be very easy to stretch it out or um, get a pull. So here's my skirt. I've got the pockets pinned forward. This is how the side seam looks with the pocket in it. You do not have to do a pocket. I just find pockets are wonderful and they are helpful. My mom always tries to have her phone on her and if she doesn't have a pocket, it does make life harder. I went ahead since I was sitting at the, at the serger and stitching anyway, and I searched around the hem just to um, finish that off. And at this point, if I want to, I could go ahead and just put my hem in. I'm just going to turn up about 3 8 of an inch. I think a half inch is included in your pattern for your hemline, which means you could do a turn twice and do a tiny hem if you want to, or, or press up and do a half inch hem. I'm gonna do about a three eighths, just a little bit deeper than the serging line and put that in. So I'm gonna do that. And we're going to now pin our bodice to our, our, pin our skirt to our bodice. If you are following along, we are at um, step 28. It's going to work exactly the way we just did it with the bodice. We are going to take our bodice, turn it inside out. I've already 
put my um, pins on, I've already quartered it, so I have pins on the center front and on my side seams, and we're going to take those pins and match them to our skirt, our center front and side seam. So I have pockets in the front so I can tell my front is this little green bird. And so the front of my bodice, so I'm going to open this up. We're actually going to kind of be pulling this through the neckline of this. So here's my neckline. I'm gonna grab the waist of the skirt, kind of folding it in on itself and pulling it through the neckline up to the waist and trying not to lose too many pins, though I definitely did lose a pin. And I'm gonna find my front and my back so I don't accidentally get my skirt on backwards. This is the back of my shirt. So we're gonna match center back to center back. And this is again going to get stretched and we are going to add elastic. I'm going to be using 3 8 of an inch regular elastic. You could use clear if you want to. I don't, clear is not my favorite. I find that it tends to um, shred and break pretty easily. You can do this in two steps if you want to. If it's easier for you to sew this on first and then come back and add the elastic, you certainly can. If you feel confident enough, you can serge or zigzag your elastic on when you're sewing the waistband on. I would go ahead and pin everything first, then grab your elastic, pin the elastic on. You want the elastic to be about your waist measurement or maybe an inch or two smaller than your waist measurement, depending on how um, stretchy your elastic is. The elastic will stretch out as it gets stitched through when being applied and the weight of the skirt will pull on the elastic. So you want it a, maybe just a little tighter um, than you might normally do for a project that doesn't have a heavy skirt pulling down on it. If you do not want your pocket to be, um, you could stitch down your pocket a little bit at the top beforehand, you know, kind of close up that seam if you want to. Okay, so can you see the skirt kind of hanging out the neckline? But that makes it easier to work on this waistline and then we will just be stretching like we did before. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish pinning my waist on. I'm gonna go grab my elastic and pin it on and sew the whole thing at once put my hem in. I'm going to do both of those things. I'll show you a few close-ups of the waist and elastic going together. And then I'm going to do my sleeve hem. So I'm very, I'm 20 minutes-ish from being done personally with this. Um, actually, the thing that's going to take the longest is pinning my waist together. The sewing takes seconds. The same with the hemming. Okay, I'm going to show you a few close-ups of this waistband all pinned together with the elastic, and then we'll move on to hemming. Quick peek before we go sew this on, I just have everything pinned together. Once again, the skirt is lighter than your waistband, so you will be stretching as you go. And then I have just quartered my elastic also. So I will start in the center back. I'm actually, I've, you can see I've got two pins here. I'm gonna take this top one off, start with this one, and then I stretch as I go, and then we'll lay this one down. So I will not be sewing through all layers at once as far as the elastic goes. I will be starting with just one layer like that and stretching and stitching all the way through. This is the skirt side and I have put the elastic on the skirt side. The reason I did that is I looked at their directions and that's how they did it and I thought, well, I don't know that it matters that much so that's how I'm going to do it too. All right, let's get this stitched in and I'm gonna go ahead and put the hem in and then I'm going to also go ahead and put the sleeve hem in. I'm not loving the blue thread. There's only a little tiny bit on the underarm. I'm going to go ahead and put white on for the hemming. I just think it shadows through and I don't love it on there. All right, going to do all these things. I'll show you how this looks stitched and then we'll go put it on the dress form. Okay, here is the inside of the waistband. I did stitch them all together. Um, the elastic was just a tiny bit smaller than the band quite a bit smaller than the skirt. This is how it looks on the outside. So this is where the elastic is. This is the lower band. And there's our side seam with our little pockets in it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start putting in my hem. Okay, friends, this is definitely a one day sew easily. If you're not filming it, it's a half a day sew. Um, potentially adding the pockets, add a little, little extra time to it, but really not bad at all. It's on a smaller dress form, so it doesn't fit exactly how it will when my mom wears it. It's a little blue sawn at the top, which actually is super cute. I don't, I think it'll be a little flatter in the front on her. I like the high-low hem. Even if you don't need it, I just think it's cute. 
So I'm glad we did that for mom. Great pattern to try, and I would love to know if you sew it. I would love to know the fabrics you use. Please leave a comment below and tell me if you've sewn this up, if you've made any changes. If you'd like to make the dress I'm wearing, this was last week's project. I will put a link up above and you can click through. It's actually two projects. Um, one is the Bondi tee, which is the shirt I'm wearing, and then I show how I turned that into a dress. Once again, filmed two whole segments with no mic, because I'm a professional.